Hello, I am Endlessness and welcome back to Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis and in this video I wanted to give you a quick overview of the new content. So, first of all, there is no new event this week, but we have gotten a new FF7 chapter with playable Vincent and skills have also finally arrived. But this new chapter covers all events in Gongaga, Cosmic Canyon and Nibelheim and we have two extra battles. And now I am curious because in the next chapter we should get Vincent as a new character. In August we know we'll get a Crisis Core Chapter 4 and in September we have the anniversary where they could either skip a chapter like they did in March or we could get another Crisis Core Chapter or they could also begin second episode of First Soldier. Regardless, around October we should get a new playable character. So, Vincent is our favorite edgelord in FF7, but also in Ever Crisis, he seems to be like a insanely powerful new character unit based on his limit breaks with just as good launch weapons, but I can make separate video on, on his moveset, but is another character with the same godly debuffing weapon as Sephiroth Skuja, and I am very glad Vincent looks great, but also frustrated because most other characters now look pretty underwhelming compared to him. But with Vincent we also have new chapter release campaign with multiple login bonuses, so login daily to claim all of them as well as we will have some campaign missions where we can get some crystals, character memories and gacha tickets and some other freebies. Since Vincent is a new character, we also need to farm his XP quite a lot, as he'll be below level 50 when you first launch the game, but also Vincent has gotten his own battle tower where you can get some freebies like gacha tickets, character memories and Vincent's noble memories for that level 80. And the final boss is Bahamut, our last current summon, and in this tower you can only use Vincent with Aerith and Lucia. So a team of two shooters and a stick. Quite surprising because I didn't expect them to choose those two particular characters. But I was also a bit scared because Aerith is only a healer for me and I have no good weapon for Lucia, but it was doable. Vincent has also gotten a new launch draw where you can get only Vincent's weapons, but you can also only use red crystals. We already had this draw for Yuffie and Kate Sith, and it seems to be popular among those big players who quickly want to make some progress on Vincent's weapons. Vincent also has a launch limit break banner. It's very good with new party attack weapon, but I'll take a closer look in a separate video. But it's top S plus banner just like most exclusive banners. However, I don't think anyone expected this to be exclusive Limit Break Banner though. Now, guilt. It was a bit weird coming in blind since we didn't have any notices with guilt details, but now we know everything. Or rather, we are learning everything as we go. But currently, we cannot expand the max amount of members as we level up the guilds. Yes, Applebot officially said it during their livestream that as we level up the guilds, the amount of max members will also increase. It is not the case at launch at least, and I am guessing they'll add in the future after the guilds have grown, most likely because of guild rankings to keep it more, more fair. But hopefully they, they'll add this guild expansion feature sooner than later. But quick overview. You can join one guild, and if you leave any guild twice, you'll have a 24 hour penalty before you can join again. When you are in a guild, you have daily missions, which are easy, it's just natural progression as you're playing the game, but for guild growth, it is important to do all of them on a daily basis because all members contribute to guild growth and use those points to level up guild bonuses. Personally, I am a bit surprised there are currently no weekly missions and we also have no guild rewards like crystals, but guilds have only been released right now and I'm, I'm sure they will expand them in the future. Now the guild boosts. We have four boosts, Materia, Battles, Highwind and Chocobos, and sure, don't expect anything huge, but they will still be helpful. 
In my guild we currently have level 5 materia and I can already notice that I need slightly less materials and higher levels will further increase synthesis with us seeing less materials and our chance for a higher rarity materia will be also slightly increased. So a slightly higher chance for us to get more 5 star materials is something I would gladly take. Then battle boost is for battles, the higher the level the higher chance for a special rare enemy encounter which are not the normal cactuars but diamond ones that will give you mithril ore. Other than that you'll also get more character experience and more rewards but only from enhancement quest battles, so not every battle is just those ones. High winds will increase chance of you getting rare materials from collecting, so purple items and astroins, and at higher levels it will also increase chance of us getting those rare encounters, so those bombs and cactuars. Chocobo boosts will shorten the duration of expeditions and at higher levels it will also increase capacity of your chocobos and the chance of getting a high rank chocobo when you attempt to buy one in the exchange. In my opinion, the Materia and High Wind seem to be the most important boosts that should have the highest priority to upgrade in every guild. Then we also have new guild weapons for every character, which is kind of similar to how we have a monthly copy of the Bastard Sword, and each copy of a weapon costs 10 guild coins, and we can get two per day, so once a week we can buy a copy. Each of those weapons is different, but some of them have party abilities like boost mdev or pdev for all allies which can be i think very useful for some battles without us having to boost each character's individual defenses but in the future when we can over boost those weapons further they seem like quite nice weapons to be honest some of them have very interesting command abilities and i think they could be useful that's all we have on day one, but we already know our first guild ranking is coming on July 24th, so next Wednesday, and it seems to be a similar format to battle rankings, but here every guild member will be able to attempt the battle three times per day, and the whole guild will need to work together. New addition is this additional equipment where points will be assigned to each weapon and gear, and it will be different for each ranking. I am currently unsure how it works, but next week we'll know all the details. But before guild ranking begins, we'll have a short period of time for everyone to plan their strategy before the actual event begins. And those mock battles are because we'll have a limited amount of attempts per day, so you want to use that period of time to find the most efficient way to earn the highest amount of points during the ranking. However, we know that Magic Earth will be most effective in this ranking event, which is perfect for Vincent's exclusive banner. On Sunday we'll also get the Hellhouse Crash, but the summer event will end at the same time and I find it a little bit weird because it feels like they forgot to finish the summer event story. At least it, to me it doesn't feel like we got a proper conclusion to that. However, that will be all for now, so thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next one.